Hello, everybody, and welcome to this brand new season of UC Sports. I'm William Richardson. Alongside me, we have the ever so dapper Anthony DiBernardo. We've got a brand new season of UConn Sports for you, but first off, we're going to start with football. Anthony? Thanks. Well, the first time since 2008, the UConn Huskies football team is 2-0 and after knocking off the Army Black Knights this past weekend. Our very own William Richardson has the story. I'm William Richardson, reporting from the Pratt and Whitney Stadium at Rensselaer Field, where the UConn football team just faced off against the Army Black Knights. And this was a great game. UConn came out on top by a final score of 22 to 17. And this wasn't really that type of game where UConn had a comfortable lead all game, but UConn was able to find a way to battle back. Bryant Sheriffs led the offense. He had 19 of 25 for 270 yards. He didn't have a passing touchdown, but he was able to make a lot of good moves on the ground with his running abilities. Arkeel Newsom, he did have a touchdown in the game. He finished with 13 carries and 74 yards and a touchdown. Ron Johnson also had a touchdown as well. And post game, we were able to talk to Coach Bob Diaco along with Graham Stewart and a couple of other players as well. So let's go ahead and check that out. They love being together. They love playing football. Um, and, and that shines through in our preparation. Uh, and, it, and it showed today where adversity isn't really affecting them for extended periods of time. Um, and, and they're brought in to, hey, make a play. Somebody step up. Somebody else step up and make a play. Your run there for, for the touchdown, it seemed like there were a few guys that had a chance at you and you just kind of ran through them. I'm just, uh, just keep my uh, legs moving at all times, you know, and uh, I had the mindset that I was going to get in there. So. Um, it's growing, but I think we, in the off season, we knew that we were going to be able to put up points. I would like to score touchdowns instead of the field goals, but um, that's going to come. We just we left a lot of points on the board t today and last week, so we just we have to fix that. But um, as far as moving the ball, um, I think we moved the ball really well. Got a lot of first downs, and and the confidence is up um, for me and, and the rest of the offense. How important is it to get these kind of wins early in the season, where you don't really have a comfortable lead, but you have to battle back from beginning to end? Yeah, I mean, like I was saying earlier, uh, getting these first two wins is a huge help to us. You know, we kind of build momentum. You get more confidence, you know, re more reassured, and it, it just makes things a little bit easier. How has the team progressed from the Villanova game to this game and now moving forward? We're just trying to get better each and every day. Uh, work on the things we're supposed to work on. Uh, you know, just be nitpicked, you know, try to master your craft and uh, grow your love for your teammate. That wraps up a two-game homestand for the Huskies. Their next game will be on Saturday against Missouri on the road in Columbia. Reporting from Pratt & Whitney Stadium at Rensselaer Field, I'm William Richardson, and this is UC Sports. Our very own William Richardson was there against Army, saw a great win, but they'll have a tough matchup next Saturday against Missouri, an SAC football team, so that will be tough. On to women's soccer where the UConn women's soccer team, ranked 20th in the nation, suffered their first loss of the season Sunday afternoon after losing to the number 19th ranked Rutgers by a score of 2-0. Although UConn outshot, outshot the Scarlet Knights 18-13, UConn could not find the back of the net against a tough and gritty Rutgers defense. UConn now moves to 6-0 and and 1, excuse me, 6-1 and 1 and 0 on the season, and will hope to get back on track this Friday when they travel to Central Connecticut. Now on to field hockey. The UConn field hockey team, winners of the last two national championships, have started this season with an impressive 6-0 start. The Huskies have been outscoring their opponents by an outstanding score of 33-3. The team has been clicking on all cylinders. Their last game was on Sunday here at home, where the Huskies beat Boston College by a final score of 2-1. Anthony DiBernardo was there. Let's check out those highlights. I'm Anthony DiBernardo reporting from the Sherman Family Complex, where the UConn field hockey team just defeated the Boston College Eagles by a score of 2-1. It was not so great weather out for the Huskies, but that didn't stop them en route to their sixth win of the season. Anna Middendorf and Charlotte Weitner scored the two goals for the Huskies. Anna Middendorf's goal coming early in the game and Weitner's coming late off a clutch penalty shot after a great assist from her teammates. After the game, we spoke with Weitner, Middendorf, and Coach Stevens. We felt that that play was open, and so um, it's something we practice all week and it was just executed beautifully. Um, everything has to be right. Sharp put the ball out, um, the stop's perfect. Uh, Rowe throws it down there and she just nailed it in there. Um, but yeah, all, all teams, all teams practice these plays all week and it's great when they, when, they, when they actually work. And I think it's not really individual, like the hat tricks that I've scored are not really like my effort. Like obviously it felt like great scoring goals and scoring a lot of goals, but 
it's just like the team is really well connected and at the end I'm just like in the right spot I guess. I think we just have something really special going on here. Um, everybody works really hard every day and um, we're just looking forward. Every game is important so we're just going to keep going. The big story being the sophomore Charlotte Weitner who before this game tacked in three consecutive hat tricks and added on another goal earlier today. The Huskies improved to 6-0 and on the season and hope to keep that undefeated streak alive next Sunday, September 20th, when they take on Lafayette. From Sherman Family Complex, I'm Anthony DiBernardo, and this is UC Sports. Man, the guy that did that last package, oh, he's so handsome. But you too, you did a great job, Army. Toss it back and forth, one another. Oh, it is good to be back, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something, Anthony, definitely something. Don't hold back your emotions. <laughs> well, stick around and we'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You look bored. You look like you need a homework break. Do you know what's going on at UConn? Do you want to be entertained? Then go to the UCTV channel 14 at youtube.com. youtube.com slash the UCTV channel 14. You're welcome. And welcome back. As we reach the halfway point of September, the UConn men's soccer team is looking forward to building on the momentum from last season. Here's our very own Cheyenne Baker with more. Cheyenne? Thanks, Will. The team played this past Sunday at Maroney Stadium, where they extended their winning streak to two games, beating UC Santa Barbara by a final of 2-1. to one. The Gauchos scored early on a penalty kick. However, the Huskies came back with two late goals in similar fashion as their first win at Harvard. This is impressive as the team started their season with three straight scoreless draws. So here is a quick recap of their season thus far. I haven't really tightened up. Are we making progress? Absolutely. Look, we're going to be really good by the end of this year. Really good. The UConn men's soccer team didn't kick off their season the way they intended to. Although they did not lose any games, they did not win any either until their fourth game of the season. Even though Coach Reed refused to say his team was frustrated, you could clearly see the tension rising with every minute that passed until they scored their first goal. The team finally scored their first two goals of the season at Harvard and continued the offense against UC Santa Barbara. But I think the, the thing you miss is forget the goals. We score a goal at Harvard, first goal of the season, we celebrate like we won the World Cup. They come back down and score a great goal when I within two minutes, I would imagine. We answer right back, boom, resiliency. Tonight, first half, we played really well, best we've played all year. And then we get into a 30 minute lull, you know, we don't play well. The weather's a problem, we're not playing great. They get a goal, it was a fair call. He tripped them in the box. Not only I would want the call. Uh, and then we showed great resiliency again. We showed great resiliency again. It was also an emotional night as the team was able to get a dramatic win in front of legendary coach. Joseph Maroney in what could be one of his final appearances at the stadium named in his honor. For me, it was really special. When Coach told us before the game, it was obviously a moment of sadness and, you know, think, it was a thankful moment too for me because I went over and I told him, I shook his hand and I said, you know, I've been a fan of UConn soccer since I was five. I've lived in Connecticut, grew up, so it was really a dream for me to come here. And I just oh, thanked him for all he's done for the program. And you, you see him, he's in the pouring rain sitting there watching the game. Like, who does that anymore, you know? And it was just incredible to see, and I was incredibly thankful for him. The Huskies hope to extend their 12-game unbeaten streak dating back to the 2014 season when they face off against the Rhode Island Rams this Saturday at Joseph Maroney Stadium. And welcome back to the, surprisingly enough, NCAA champions, the UConn Huskies. <laughs> Uh, as some of you may be aware, this is Coach's 10th championship. This is this team's third visit in a row. They are now certified to provide White House tours. <laughs> I was telling folks this is becoming like uh, the annual Christmas tree lighting. <laughs> and I just, I, we do this every year around this time. This is 
are guaranteed to go in every other time. <laughs> The UConn women's basketball team, fresh off the third consecutive national championship, were at the White House today as they were honored by President Barack Obama. The Huskies, who finished the season last year 38-1, have made 10 total visits to the White House under coach Gina Ariema and will be looking to make it 11 as their season gets underway on November 16th against Ohio State University in Columbus. Anthony? Well, there's a second team that plays basketball in stores, and that's the UConn men's basketball team, and their schedule was released earlier this month. Some of the big non-conference games fans get to look forward to this season include Tuesday, December 8th against Maryland, which will be part of the Jimmy V Classic at Madison Square Garden, and on Saturday, December 12th, when the Ohio State Buckeyes come to Gamble Pavilion. Not to mention the conference games against SMU that should add to that should add on to what fans expect to be a great AAC rivalry. The Mustangs come to UConn Thursday, February 18th at the Excel Center. UConn's home games will feature 10 games at Gamble and 9 games at the Excel Center. The Huskies look to get back into the national tournament after missing out on it last year. So, Anthony, we've had a good week at UConn, with UConn sports so far. Yes, we have. Now, on, a little bit off of UConn sports for a second. Fantasy football. UC sports, we have our second annual fantasy football league. I'm winning. 14 teams this year, which is pretty big for us. But we had a lot of big upsets this week. Our very own Eric Weeks has made a couple of very notorious bad trades. But that's not about him. Anthony, how's your team looking so far? My team is looking... Pretty good. I got Andrew Luck leading the way at quarterback and a surprising move, third overall in that draft. I took Le'Veon Bell. He is suspended the first two games, but when he comes back week three, I've already won one of those games without him. I just have to win next week, and I'm about to take off because I'm taking this whole league by storm. Calling it now, Anthony DiBernardo, the kid, his football team, champions. Calling it. Boom. I, I will not say I'm anything. dropping the proverbial mic because my team is awesome. I'm not going to say Like anything. me. I'm going to let him have his moment. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode of UC Sports. It's not going to be a moment. Alongside Anthony Bernardo, I'm William Richardson. Thank you guys, and we'll see you guys next week.